I understand. I just don't care. It's the model for today. Why not? <laughs> I don't actually care a lot because we're going trucking. I'm very excited. Going back up to Kenora, we're gonna grab another load. It's gonna be ready for us in the morning. We're gonna bring it back down here to Brainerd, another one. And then I have a load lined up in Fargo that's taking me home. So tell me, tell me, whisper it in my ear. Don't look in my ear. Apparently I have hairy ears. Whisper it to me. Are you excited? It's a new day. It's a new one. Look at this. The sun is in the sky. It's still burning. It hasn't burnt out yet. That is good news. That is good news. We're here at Casey's in Pillager, Minnesota. Just down the road from Brainerd. I stayed here for tonight. Didn't have a reload. Uh, but now that I'm headed up to Kenora, I kind of wish I knew that yesterday because I would have been in Kenora right now. I would have gone straight back and been there last night yet. But we didn't know. There might have been something in Fargo for today or tomorrow. There might have been something better paying. Uh, I think they had something lined up, but it wasn't working out. They weren't too sure, so I just stayed here near Brainerd for night. Uh, turns out the load did work out that they wanted. It was just going to be on Friday. So we're going to go back and do another quick run here in order to Brainerd. This seems to be a, a regular route for me nowadays, and I'm not complaining, actually. If we do it right, if we do it right, I can do one per day. I can... Load in the morning in Kenora, run down to Brainerd, unload, and then run back to Kenora the same day, and then reload the next day. Technically, if we had these loads every day, I could be boom, 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 back and forth, five loads a week, Monday to Friday, right? Well, but then I wouldn't be home on Friday. I'd be, actually, yeah, because from here I'd unload Friday, and then I'd just go home instead of going back to Kenora. Five loads, it'd be bang, 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 bang. Bang, 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 how many, how many is that, five? Bang, bang. Just two bangs mean one bang bang is one there and back there and back there and back five times okay i gotta get this right start in kenora go brainerd kenora brainerd kenora brainerd kenora brainerd kenora brainerd home yes that would be a good week if we could line that up i just don't know if there's regular and it would have to be going to the location that unloads until 10 p.m. It's very difficult. There's there's two locations here that we can deliver to. One location closes at 5 p.m. One location closes at 10 p.m. The 10 p.m. one's great. You can get down here, get unloaded, get back. But the 5 p.m. one, if anything goes wrong and you don't get loaded first thing in the morning up in Kenora, there's any delays whatsoever, you can't make it for the 5 p.m. And then uh, you're stuck down here. And then it messes up your five load week. I would get bored of that though, I think. I think I'd get bored of that. I like things to change up every now and then. I like getting familiar with a route like this. I like doing the same thing again and again. Just, you know, get familiar with it, you know where all the stops are. And then I like to do something else for a while. Because my mind would get bored going the same road back and forth every day, every day, every day. That's why I bought this truck. I, I, I need to see places. I need to go places, explore. I, I want to see the world around me even if it is in my region uh, i want to see different places all the time so i don't know i'm happy i'm happy i'm not complaining at all i'm happy with everything that's going on who knows what we're picking up in fargo whatever it is it's gonna be fun and uh, no, i know let's get going let's get let's get going it's time to have some fun let's get on the road it really feels like it's taken forever for me to get ready this morning but at least i'm not in a rush Tomorrow will be a little bit more of a rush, but today we can sort of relax, take it easy. You guys ready? Just waiting for my air to fill up there. All right. Just double check that we saw our trailer is attached. I can still hear that the air is filling up. You can usually hear if you have an air leak or if the air is still filling in your trailer by listening to this red thing here. If you hear an air hissing sound coming from here, it could be the valve behind here as well, but it's most likely that the air is running to the trailer or it's running out of the trailer somewhere. All right, let's go.
Got the RV Club of Minnesota here today. These are some nice, nice fifth wheels there. Britt and I would love to have a fifth wheel too. We might actually use it more. We have our travel trailer, uh, but I bought that myself <laughs> right before I met Britt, or right as I met Britt. And at that time, I didn't know where our relationship was going. I had just met her. And I hadn't had much luck in previous relationships. So, uh, you know, I had bought the camper and sort of just said to myself, well, I'm just gonna buy something that works for me and we'll see what happens. Turns out I you know, fell in love and stuff and got married. Trying to bring kids into this world. And now we uh, we need something bigger if we want to use it. Or we would like something bigger. I don't know why that person stopped there. They didn't have to. But I guess they were trying to be nice, so I'll take it. Look at this lawn. Wow. Take a moment to look at that lawn. Wow. Now well, that is impressive. Hashtag impressed. It takes quite a bit to get that certification from Trevor Josh himself. Hashtag impressed. Like, look at it. Can you see through the window there? Five stars for that lawn. Five stars. I should have gone. I should have gone. I was too distracted by that beautiful lawn. Shoot. Okay. Oh, now there's non-stop traffic. Of course there is. This is almost as bad as that intersection back home that I was telling you about, suicide intersection. See here, these guys are coming around here 60 or 50, 55, 60 mile an hour. I can't see them until they're around that bend there. But it's not as bad because I can see traffic coming from this way. Uh, trying to snag him up too. So he 
problems with the leveling valve on this trailer yesterday. After I unloaded the lumber, the, the trailer obviously lifts up because there's less weight on the trailer and the air pressure in the airbags causes the trailer to lift up, right? But there's a leveling valve underneath there that would normally release air in the bags and release pressure so that the trailer goes back down to its normal ride height. Well, for some reason, this trailer didn't want to return to its normal ride height and the bags were just like pushed all the way up. And I had to sit there fiddling with it for a while. I got it fixed. But uh, you'll see under here, the leveling valve is on the rear axle. Pardon me. Right there, you see that? That's the leveling valve and for some reason, it was hissing out air like it wanted to, like it was releasing air pressure, but the air pressure was coming from my compression tanks on the truck. So I was just losing air pressure. That's my, the, the first sign. Uh, when you hear, when you see your air pressure going down, there's air escaping somewhere, right? And it happened to be from this valve here. So it was releasing air out of these, or out of my tanks instead of these airbags. The valve was sticking. So, not too sure what was the actual problem, but I, I disconnected the uh, air leveler, moved it up and down a few times, tried to dump the air out of the suspension with this valve up front here on the other side. Under here, see it's up right now. I put it to dump the air and uh, it wouldn't dump the air. So I was, uh, wasn't getting too frustrated. I mean, it's not my trailer, but at the same time, I don't wanna spend a whole day waiting for someone to be able to look at it, you know, at a shop, local shop or something. So I wanted to fix it. It seemed like a pretty simple, simple fix. And it was eventually. Uh, I tried to figure out where the air was being blocked and which valve wasn't working. I worked on that valve for a little bit to get it moving again. And eventually it worked. I got that valve to turn over and it's been working great ever since. So I, I don't know, it looks, it doesn't look old. For some reason it must have just slightly seized up a little bit. It's not cold, but uh, yeah, ever since then it's been working just fine. Air dumps out of the suspension just fine now, lifts back up to where it's supposed to be. I reconnected the leveling valve to where it's supposed to be, where it was when I found it. Problem solved. I don't really know what it was. I know which valve it is, but I don't know why it would suddenly stop working on a nice warm summer day. If it was winter time, I'd be like, well, yeah, it's frozen. Shoot some airline antifreeze through there and bada bing, bada boom, you're set. But I didn't even bother with that now because I'm, I know it's not frozen. Maybe it just looks new because it looks like it's new. This, this trailer just got safety. That's why I grabbed it. It's not my favorite type of trailer that we have. It's a little bit of a lower deck than our other step decks. And uh, the winches aren't as good. It's a bit of an older trailer. It's got a weaker rub rail. Yeah, but it was the only one that was like, the, all the good ones were taken already when I got there. So I grabbed this one because it just had a fresh safety done to it. I checked out the sticker. I'm like, oh, this is brand new. You could tell the sticker was just put on there. So I knew the trailer would have just been looked over, right? And it looks like the valve was new, but for some reason it was sticking. Maybe it was sticking because it was new. Maybe it's just a new part needed to be worn in a little bit. Working now. And that's my story. The way I got the valve to start working was I, I, I pressurized it, I, I sent pressure to it, and then I released all the air up front here. But the air wouldn't release out of the bags, right? So I did that again and again and again, trying to push the valve over. And where the air hisses out, there's a little tube at the bottom there, and the air hisses out of there, right? And it's coming from my tanks up here. I would just put my thumb over it for a second and then release it. Put my thumb over it for a second just to build up that back pressure. So that wherever this valve was sticking, it would have a little bit of back pressure. Does that make sense? And it worked. That's all it took. It was just stop the air from hissing out for a second. Release it. Let it hiss out. 
stop it again and I did that maybe like five times and then suddenly I heard the valve go clunk and then everything was fine but it looks like it's brand new so oh well I'll make a note of it and keep on trucking just coming up to the border here now to cross at International Falls, Minnesota, into Fort Francis, Ontario, you need to pay a $16 US toll. That says no left turn when there's traffic backed up. Well, I don't see any traffic back up here. So yeah, they charge you to uh, leave the US. I guess it's kind of a compliment. I mean, they want me to stay here so bad. They're like, well, we want you to stay. So if you want to go, you're gonna have to pay. Or maybe it's Canada saying, we really don't want you back. We're gonna charge you $16 if you do. I don't know, one way or the other. You gotta pay going north. meters, turn left on Boat Avenue. I really wish they wouldn't do this. I, I hate that there's a, and it's cash only. They don't accept cards or anything, just cash only. And it's at this little uh, booth here. I'll see you guys on the other side, okay? Oh, Fort Francis, you and your construction. I don't know how I'm supposed to go uh, go west from Fort Francis. I'm trying to get to Highway 11, and you get right out of the border. The usual road you take to get onto this road is closed. I figured it out. A little bit confusing. It's the third time I've done this, this like in the last two weeks. And it still confuses me. I think next time I'll have a better idea of how I'm gonna get out of town. This road, this intersection coming up here. Meters, turn right on. Trans Canada Highway, Highway 11 and then turn left in 190 meters. Like we usually go straight through, I'd come from the left, that's where the border is, and I'd go straight through this road here to the right, and that would take me up to 11 and around. But now that they have this road closed here, I came up here and I was like, well, I'll just make a left turn. I don't know if you can see it on the light standard off to the right there. It says no left turns. So I was forced to make a right turn, go and try to figure out how to turn around. I don't know how we're supposed to navigate this. There's no detour signs anywhere saying, hey, westbound trucks, follow this route. Oh, you sort of gotta figure it out on your own. So if you're coming to Fort Francis and you don't come through here that often, just a heads up. It's a little bit confusing, but you'll be okay, all right? In 100 meters, turn left on. Trans Canada Highway, Highway 11. It's a friendly town up here. Uh, you'll be okay. Just under a half tank right now. 
I want to be able to get to Brainerd, unload, and get to Fargo tomorrow night. here in their little lot just by the gate gate opens at 7 a.m. or apparently it opens a little earlier maybe I'll see if I can get it to open at quarter to seven that's what everyone else seems to do I don't know you go to the gate you push a button and you wait for them to open it it says it only opens at 7 a.m. but every time I've been here so far I've seen trucks sneak in there at like 645 I don't know what I don't know what's going on. Whatever. It's all right. We'll get we'll get loaded in the morning. Same run again down to Brainerd. Same thing. We'll unload tomorrow afternoon or tomorrow evening down in Brainerd. And then, like I've been telling you, we're going to book it over to Fargo, North Dakota. We're going to sleep there overnight and load up in the morning and head back to Winnipeg. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. I hope you enjoyed it.